Oh boy, oh boy. 2022 was definitely an interesting year with all the chaos that has been happening in the world around us, but apparently we still managed to get three different versions of Pinocchio, technically four because we saw Pinocchio in the Puss in Boots movie as well. One of them was better than the other, but I really want everyone to agree with me that even though we got this yesified Pinocchio last year, the new live action Disney remake takes the cake as not just one of the worst live action adaptations ever, so far, of a beloved children's character, but also as the worst Pinocchio adaptation ever. No, I don't care that Pinocchio, a true story is bad as well, at at least we got some laughs out of the memes that were created because of it, which is a huge plus in my opinion. Although I must admit that in the Disney live action remake, Keegan Michael Key single handedly carries the movie as the fuck, even though he's not the main attraction of the movie or not the one we should be following, but everything else was just so horrible about the movie, starting from the animation all the way to the lightning effects in the movie, that it's hard for me to find something to appreciate. Now, you know what? I changed my mind. The yesified version of Pinocchio is the worst, but only because the Disney remake has the fox, and that's it, that's my argument. However, today's video is not gonna be about the two worst Pinocchio movies, which by the way took away the joy that the original one had from 1940, but rather about which movie will win this year's animated feature film category at the Oscars. The nominees are the following, Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio, Marcel the Shell with Shoes On, Puss in Boots The Last Wish, The Sea Beast and none other than Turning Red. As you may have already guessed from the introductory part of this video, I have my eyes on the winner already and I seriously think that this year's winner is gonna be Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. Now I'm not trying to say that the other movies are not Oscar worthy material. For example, Puss in Boots The Last Wish is an incredible sequel and it's one of, if not, the best movies in the entire Shrek universe and considering the Shrek 2 exists, this is a big statement to say. I have already talked about the movie in another video of mine, so go check it out if you want to hear me analyze the movie more thoroughly. However, I must add that the movie did such an amazing job by presenting an impressive cast of characters with a compelling story and a deep message that it was hard to decide who is gonna win the Oscar this year. Puss in Boots did a near perfect job at presenting how a person might feel who has a ton of anxiety and frequent panic attacks, which is a deep message that wasn't just portrayed to children but adults as well, in a way that despite the age difference, both age groups could understand what Puss was going through. I still highly recommend for people to go and watch this movie. Turning Red was a pretty enjoyable movie as well, in which we follow our protagonist, Mei Lee, who has to deal with turning into a giant red panda, which is supposed to be a metaphor for a girl getting her first period. Now I wouldn't say that this movie wasn't Oscar worthy, however, it just lacks the aspects that it would put this movie in a true race with the Pinocchio movie or the Puss in Boots sequel. Although we must admit that the Academy seemingly has a huge boner for Disney and their movies, so um, let's hope that Turning Red is not gonna be the one to win, because this year both Dreamworks Puss in Boots and Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio have embarrassed the studio in quality by a long shot. I would have to talk about Marcel the Shell with Shoes on or the Sea Beast, however these movies don't come nearly as close to even Turning Red, let alone the two runner-up movies for the first place, even though they have been critically well acclaimed and loved by a lot of people. And now, the true gem of this category, the single best Pinocchio movie that has ever been adapted from the original story way back in 1883, I present to you this year's winner of the animated feature film category, Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. Now, you all might ask, okay, but why is it any better than the other movies in this list? What is so special about it? Thank you for asking. There's so much to talk about regarding this movie and I swear to god this has to be the best animated movie of the past years. Everything about it just screams quality and Guillermo del Toro really outdid himself with this piece of art. I am literally like a little girl gushing over and being a huge fan of this movie and I swear when I started watching it I felt like I got to open a gift on a Christmas morning. And you know what the best thing about the movie is? That it changes the way the story has been told over and over again and instead we get a fresh breath of air, start anew and have new morals and we can deduct different lessons from the movie after it ends. Now it's no surprise that Guillermo del Toro likes to make his movies with a darker theme than the usual ones we see and this movie is no different. After he found out that his movie was nominated for an Oscar and his movie won the best animated motion picture award at the 2023 Golden Globe Awards, he said, quote, animation is cinema. Animation is not a genre for kids, it's a medium, and we see this come up so much in animated movies. Be it Shrek, the Puss in Boots sequel, or Del Toro's Pinocchio, all of these movies are made with the intention to have a message for the older audience focusing or catering towards young adults and adults alike. I seriously kept thinking about The Nightmare Before Christmas and Coraline the moment I saw the first scenes in the movie. Those are two of the biggest and most successful stop motion movies ever made and both of them are much more suited for children over the age of 10 rather than the younger ones who could watch the old Disney cartoons such as the 1940s Pinocchio. But this movie it takes the formula, whips out an UNO reverse card and just focuses on delivering pure and raw emotions but at the same time they are so complex that you have to watch the movie more than once to actually understand everything. For example, a key part of the original story is that nobody wants to accept Pinocchio as the wooden boy that he is, so he desperately tries to become a real boy in which he succeeds in the end, however his journey is full of suffering and a ton of hardships. In this version however, Del Toro wanted to change the story so much so that in this version, the story doesn't revolve around how imperfect Pinocchio is, however he tries to present 
represent how imperfect the world around him is. The Toro crafted the story very carefully, so much so that it isn't even about Pinocchio learning how to behave slash become a real boy, but rather about Geppetto learning how to become a good father. This was actually revealed in an interview and since Del Toro himself said that he values disobedience and sees it as a virtue and how he celebrates not being changed to be loved. The movie opens up with an image of a pine cone which will become one of the main symbols throughout the movie. Pinocchio's name actually means pine nut in the Tuscan Italian dialect and at the same time in ancient times people viewed pine cones as a symbol of immortality and rebirth which we will deal with a lot in this movie, especially considering how Pinocchio is literally immortal. In one of the first scenes we meet Geppetto and his son Carlo having a walk in the woods. Geppetto tells his son to try and find the perfect pine cone which already shows as Geppetto's biggest flaw, he's a perfectionist. While at the start of the movie Geppetto is careful with everything he does and tries everything to look as perfect as possible, throughout the movie we can see him finally learning to accept Pinocchio as the imperfect little wooden boy that he is and learns to love him despite all of his flaws. After we see some more scenes of Geppetto and his son, we get to a scene where Geppetto is tasked with building a new crucifix for their local church. Carlo is there with him, however we can see some details in the background that are foreshadowing his soon to come demise. As we take a look at the glass panels in the church, we can see that they are detailed into little bits that resemble a pine cone, once again symbolizing a key element of the story. We can also see an oddly shaped dove in one window, we soon will discover is actually a bomb which is being dropped onto the church in which Geppetto is working. Between the two glass panels, we can see a figure that is oddly shaped like the wood sprite that we are gonna see later on in this movie. After this, the bomb gets finally dropped on the church and while Geppetto was outside he has to witness as his son dies in the explosion. The explosion causes Carlo's pine cone to drop outside right in front of Geppetto which symbolizes once again the fact that the pine cone was able to survive even an explosion. Geppetto buries his son, carves a gravestone for him out of wood and at the bottom of his gravestone we can see two rabbits and a pine cone. The rabbits are gonna be a key element later on as well because they are gonna be the ones who will greet Pinocchio every time he will go to the afterlife. The story fast forwards roughly 20 years and we see that the once colorful Italy gets transformed into one that's being ordered around and ruled by fascism and Benito Mussolini. This change not only warps the look of the town but it also switches the bright yellow slash red colors that we have seen into much darker ones which represents Geppetto's internal conflict, how something perfect can change into a darker version of itself or a much worse one and honestly the world just asks for a change just when we take a look at it. During the time skip, the pine cone that Geppetto's son was holding managed to grow into a tree and we meet one of our main characters, Sebastian J. Cricket, who decides to take shelter inside the pine tree, claiming it as his home. After Geppetto gets drunk one night due to his sorrows regarding his deceased son, he goes and chops down the pine tree that was born from the pine cone that was buried, which shows us how he's unable to let go of his son's death and in desperation tries to recreate his son from wood. Right after Geppetto finishes carving the wood, we can see that Pinocchio's head is more detailed than other parts of his body, which presents the fact that Geppetto created a wooden boy while in a drunken state and possibly getting tired after finishing Pinocchio's head, so afterwards just bashed his body together. I must also point out a deep line that was spoken by Geppetto himself while he was talking with and lecturing Carlo. Quote, when one life is lost, another must grow, which manifests itself through the death of Carlo and the birth of Pinocchio. After this, the wood sprite visits Pinocchio while Geppetto is sleeping upstairs and unbeknownst to him, the wood sprite turns Pinocchio into a living being while still maintaining his wooden form which is essentially immortal. The wood sprite is deliberately made to look like the biblical version of angels that we know and love, yes the kind looking ones, while death is more so designed to resemble a chimera. It's interesting that I bring up angels, especially the biblical ones, because there are also religious details hidden inside the movie. For example, the first time Pinocchio enters the church, we can see that after the bombing, Jesus' left arm was destroyed. This is a foreshadowing to the fact that towards the end of the movie, Pinocchio survives his encounter with a dogfish after a bomb blows it up. However, Pinocchio loses his arm in the process, which symbolizes his sacrifice for his father. When Pinocchio goes into town with his father, he doesn't listen to Geppetto, but instead gets involved with the circus, which is run by none other than Count Volpe. Volpe is supposed to be the replacement for the fox in this movie, which appeared in the original 1940s version of the story. His character design is really amazing, especially when we look at all the details surrounding it. His name Volpe means fox in Italian. The first time we see him, his hair shadow clearly resembles a fox's ears. His cane has a fox head on it, and his nose is extremely long, which indicates that he's a liar. Speaking of lying, Pinocchio's nose grows the same way like he does in the original, by lying. However, in this one, saying the truth won't make it grow back to its original state, but instead they have to go break the branches off, which occasionally sprouts a pine cone on them, symbolizing once again his immortality, or Geppetto has to take care of it and carve it down again. After Geppetto scores Pinocchio for going to the circus instead of school, Pinocchio gets hit by the Podesta Scar, which is a fascist Italian officer who works for Benito Mussolini in a town during the fascist Italy of the 1930s. After Pinocchio is brought to death herself by four rabbits, yes, the ones we saw in 
the tombstone in the movie earlier. He gets to meet Death. Death has snakes for her tails, which also resembles the same texture that pine cones have. How nice. She tells Pinocchio that he will never be a real boy due to the fact that he is immortal and that human lives are unique due to the fact that they only live once. Geppetto argues with Pinocchio once again and afterwards Pinocchio decides to run away with the circus so he can send a ton of money home to Geppetto. Sebastian can't help him on his journey or come with him since he traps him under a glass and puts a hammer on top of the glass. And now comes possibly one of the best segments of the movie all throughout and the segment which at the same time makes me wonder why on earth did this movie not get a nomination for best original song. Pinocchio sings Ciao Papa, a song he made up that focuses on his feelings towards Geppetto and how he will do his best to make money for him but while he's away he will constantly keep on thinking about him and never forget him. Despite every harsh word his father said to him, despite everything that he scored at Pinocchio for, he still wants to do his best to make him proud and happy. The song is sad and happy at the same time. Now while the lyrics tells us that Pinocchio will eventually reunite with Geppetto and will keep thinking about him until then, I couldn't help but cry at the fact that Geppetto was desperately trying to catch up to his adopted son while walking through the rain and all the fascist towns of Italy while seeing posters about Pinocchio being advertised as the main attraction of the circus. Like considering everything I find it really hard to believe that the movie only got one total nomination. Hell it could have easily even gotten a nomination for the best picture this year but we can't have that because the academy just seems to dislike animation. I watched Wally not so long ago and to be fair it still has to be one of my all time favorite animated movies and I totally understand why it got 6 nominations in different categories back when it was released. However the fact that Pinocchio didn't even get 2 now really baffles me. I don't know, go check out Chef Les's video about this topic, he has done a really thorough analysis about it. Anywho, Pinocchio's last show is for none other than Benito Mussolini himself but the show turns out quite bad since he makes fun of Mussolini which eventually gets him shot. He goes to visit Death again and every time he visits Death has some valuable life lesson to tell him. Like for example this time she told him that maybe he won't see his father again because the more time he dies the more time he needs to come back to life. The Podesta takes him away and makes him join the army as a weapon basically, hence the fact that he can never truly die but Candlewick, the Podesta's son, enrages at his father, shoots him in the eye with a pretty old paintball gun design but the military base gets bombed down in the process and everyone dies beside of course Pinocchio. The little wooden boy finds himself with Volpe once again who tries to burn him on a stake however with Spazzatura's help, Volpe's monkey, they kill him and escape. Geppetto and Sebastian are coming towards them in the meantime but while they are on a boat a dogfish manages to eat them. They are trapped inside his belly until Pinocchio and Spazzatura arrive and everyone is happy to see each other once more. They don't know how to escape the giant fish however this is the time when Pinocchio learns that sometimes it is okay to lie because through lying his nose grows an entire tree which allows everyone to climb out the fish. Afterwards the aforementioned scene in which Pinocchio blows up happens but this time this is the last time we see Pinocchio die. He goes to talk with Death however while he's in the afterlife Geppetto is slowly drowning. The only way he can save his dad is by sacrificing his immortality thus becoming a real boy but that means that his life is gonna be in danger now, for example from drowning. He gives up his immortality and manages to save Geppetto however Pinocchio dies in the process sacrificing his arm and his life at the same time. The wood sprite arrives and she's gonna be the one who saves the day. You see the night when Pinocchio was brought alive by the wood sprite she promised Sebastian a wish if he was able to teach Pinocchio about how to become a real human boy and his wish is granted in the end. He wishes for Pinocchio to be alive once again and they go back home to live until the end of their life. Now despite the fact that Pinocchio was brought back to life he's still gonna live forever which is what death want him about. He will have to watch his loved ones disappear, meet new people and live life carefully which is exactly what the ending is about. After years pass Pinocchio has to watch as all of his loved ones slowly pass away. Geppetto and Sebastian and Spazzatura all died of old age however we can see that Geppetto and Spazzatura had gravestones made for them out of wood which indicates the fact that Pinocchio learned wood carving from his father. Sebastian will always be with Pinocchio in a sense, here's why. After Sebastian died Pinocchio put him into a little matchbox which he afterwards put into his hollow chest making sure that he will rest inside his home that he chose from the very start. But then again it's not like he will be bored in the afterlife cause we see him in the end credits playing poker with the rabbits that took care of Pinocchio. In the end we see Pinocchio bringing flowers to his loved ones graves and as he walks away into the unknown the narrator tells us that he will most likely eventually die but we don't know when. After this the movie ends the same way it started by showing us a shot of a single pine cone however this time we also see the pine cone falling down from the tree symbolizing the end of Pinocchio's immortality. I really have to mention the voice acting in this movie as well because I'm a huge fan of it in every movie when it's done well. Pinocchio's voice is the same as Carlos and the actor Gregory Mann's angelic voice fits so perfectly with Pinocchio's childish attitude and I really can't imagine anyone else singing the song Ciao Papa. David Bradley as Master Geppetto and even McGregor as Sebastian J. Cricket was such a perfect choice that I can't emphasize 
emphasize on it enough. The way they talk, the way their tone fits the characters were so carefully chosen that I can give nothing but just praise to them. I'm really glad that the movie has seen the light of day, especially considering how Guillermo del Toro has announced that this movie has been in production all the way back in 2008, holy hell. He called the movie his passion project which honestly really shows and I think he outdid himself with this movie. I really hope that we will get more stop motion movies from him, especially with darker themes, because in my honest opinion this movie deserves every single award that it won so far and I really wish it got some more recognition than it did come more Oscar nominations for at least best original song or design, because seriously the fact that not even this movie or even Puss in Boots got any other nomination is a huge disappointment and a letdown in my opinion. However, we will see whether or not I am right about the movie winning best feature this year and I really hope that I will be because I honestly consider this to be the best film adaptation of Pinocchio ever and that this darker theme fit perfectly with the story and the characters were absolutely amazing. But this is all the time we had today. Thank you so much for watching this video, if you'd like to see some more content from me make sure to subscribe so you won't miss out on any new videos and if you thought this video was nice make sure to drop a like and a comment below. Until next time I wish everyone a wonderful evening, bye bye.